Welcome everyone. Good evening. Uh, we are in for a very, very special treat today with Intuit's Chief Curator, Allison Amick. She is going to walk us through one work by James Castle, uh, which we currently have on view at Intuit. And if you haven't had a chance to uh, return to Intuit, I really encourage you to do that. We're taking every precaution necessary to make sure that your visit with us um, feels safe and is welcoming. Uh, my name is Paula Santos and I am the Senior Manager of Learning and Engagement. And uh, we are so excited to have all of you here today. We have a suite of online programs that we started since March and uh, we are definitely well on on our way uh, to becoming, you know, at least pros at, at this part of it, at the art, at the looking together uh, on Zoom. Uh, and uh, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Allison, and she can introduce herself, introduce what will happen this evening, and uh, then we'll start looking at the work of art. Thank you, Paula, and thank you everyone for joining us here today as we uh, prepare to look at a, a wonderful drawing by James Castle. Paula, perhaps we could go ahead and bring up the artwork. Um, I encourage you while we're looking to uh, take a moment and to really uh, look and uh, to look deeply and to really uh, think about what it is that you're seeing as we go on this journey together and to consider really where the work of art uh, leads you as you're viewing it. And so we'll begin here with uh, an image of the artist James Castle. On the next slide, we have uh, the work. And this is uh, a very intimate landscape created by American artist James Castle, who was born in 1899 and died in 1977. We're looking at an untitled work. It's a horizon with a farmscape that is also undated. It was created on found paper and with soot, and it measures about six and a half by six inches. So if you're looking at this on the monitor of your screen, it's not significantly different in terms of size or scale. So again, a very intimate piece. As Paula mentioned, this work is currently on view at Intuit, where it's accompanied by five other landscapes, also from the collection of Victor Keen. And today I think we have also with us some, some of our colleagues from the James Castle House and the James Castle Collection and Archive. So uh, thank you as well. If we go to the next slide, uh, we can take a closer look. And so let's begin and settle in and really think about what we're seeing. And so let's start with looking at the surface and looking at the paper and noticing its shape, how it has irregular edges. And when you look at the center, you notice a rectangular crease and some lines that stem out from it that suggest we're seeing an envelope that's been perhaps opened up. And we can wonder when we look at this, uh, where did Castle find this particular paper? Was it already in this condition when he found it? Did he rip it and create the shape? Did he save the paper for later use or did he work on it immediately? We know that Castle uh, worked on found paper and that he did keep paper for uh, long periods of time. So thinking about this, this sort of this raw material as having had a, a previous sort of life before Castle identified it as uh, what he wanted to use to make his art. 
And so one thing that we'll look at um, a bit later as well are, are sort of these these creases and the way that they pick up the pigment, the suit that he used. You can see them um, all over this paper. And so uh, thinking as you look about how this surface really uh, impacts what you're looking at as well, the, the texture of the piece. So um, in front of us, we have a, a landscape. About halfway up, we have this sort of horizon line. There's a building, a portion of a building with a roof on the left and various structures sort of dot the, primarily the right half of the composition, sort of off in our distance. Um, it's very still. There's no uh, real human presence that we can see. We don't see, uh, a person. We don't see necessarily any identifiable uh, tools that might give us a sense of the work that was happening on site. We don't see uh, any animal life. We know dogs or cats or chickens or other, other types of life that we might associate with the outdoors and with uh, nature or the farm. There's a certain perhaps sense of uh, remoteness to the piece, but yet when we look to the right, we can see these uh, telephone poles that have emerged, making us think about this uh, human connectivity that we're not seeing physically in the work. Um, if we look at the next slide, perhaps the closest that we see to a hint of a human presence is this, this sort of uh, form that we can see kind of by the building on the left side. Uh, and there's a detail of this as well. It's something that didn't stand out to me at first, but as I continue to look more and more at this work, I thought, well, I wonder, is this, did he alter the course of his drawing? Was this sort of a, a perhaps a human face or am I just uh, seeing that myself uh, in the landscape? So it's an um, interesting to think about uh, that as well. Is it a trick of the eye? Uh, so in looking at this work, it calls to question sort of where are we and what can we know about this landscape that we're looking at? And so this brings us sort of back to the life of James Castle. For the next slide. Here we see a, a map of Idaho on the bottom and some images on the top of uh, Garden Valley, Idaho, which is where Castle was born in 1899. He was the fifth of seven children. He was born deaf and his older sister Nellie later lost her hearing when she developed a case of the measles. From around 1910 to 15, uh, Castle attended the Idaho State School for the Deaf and the Blind, along with Nellie for a part of that time. Despite some schooling, he never really learned to communicate in a traditional manner, meaning speaking or writing, though he did copy uh, and create wonderful compositions using words and language um, or formal, formal use of signing. And so um, this is of note because it means that we don't actually know in his own words sort of what he was uh, intending by his art or where the location was because he didn't really uh, sign or date, I mean, date or uh, title his own artworks. So that's left a lot to our own sort of uncovering or imagination if we uh, hope to be that uh, literal with uh, determining where they're at. Um, we know that he made art starting at a young age and that his parents worked as postmasters and store owners in Garden Valley and that that location, the post office, was a, uh, a social center for the region. So even though he was in this remote, remote um, area, he still had a connection with many uh, people who would have 
come in to shop or to use the post office. And he would have seen and had access to all of the types of materials that would have come into the post office, the mail, advertisements, and so, so forth. So that kind of vi visual, uh, rich tradition of materials. And on this map, the sort of the, the pin that is on the top, that would be Garden Valley. And then uh, to the lower left is Star Idaho, they moved in 1923. And then they moved to near Boise, which would be the lower right pin in 1931, which is where uh, he spent the remainder of his life living with his family. And as you can imagine, um, most of the artwork that we have has dated from after that move. Uh, if we could go to the next slide. So this is the installation image of five landscapes that are on view uh, add into it. The one that we're looking at tonight is on the upper left. And uh, just to note, we discussed sort of thinking about the paper and the surface. You can see on the upper center, there's another uh, really interestingly carved um, envelope. Uh, below that, it's a bit difficult to make out in this image, but that particular scene was executed on um, lined paper. So variety of different types of papers and variety of different types of landscape settings, as you can kind of see coming out um, in this installation image. So uh, one thing that makes the, the work, the landscape so interesting is that um, Castle wasn't necessarily, uh, his goal was not necessarily to present a faithful rendering of an exact uh, landscape. He, there have been some successful efforts to identify particular buildings and structures, um, but uh, again, that wasn't necessarily his goal. We can think about him as having made choices about what to depict and how to depict it. And in fact, we know that uh, many of his landscapes actually look back to his time in Garden Valley and that they were uh, created sort of from memory. So we can think of the role of place and memory and sort of how that might be evoked in his, his work. Um, he did work daily in a studio setting of his own making um, as well. So if we go to the next slide, um, this is a uh, back, back to our image and we can really notice that texture that we saw uh, when we began uh, this looking, the way that the, uh, the ground the darkness of the ground contrasts with the lightness of the sky. This contrast, white, dark, presence, absence. There are dramatic lines in the sky. There's some that sort of uh, move down almost into the horizon. There's another that's almost sort of a side V in the sky. Um, the more you really look into these expanses, it's really amazing to uh, see how much is happening there and uh, the way he's so the way that he's using um, his materials how they all sort of work together to create this uh, this really evocative sort of mood you can see in the soil you can almost the the earth this uh, land in front of us how there's just such a texture kind of an unevenness it seems as though uh, it really captures uh, earth, soil, ground. We know from the label and from uh, Castle's materials that he created his works in a mixture of soot from, if we could move to the next slide, from a wood burning fireplace and saliva and that they were applied to paper with materials such as nails and sticks. And some of his works incorporate color, which was formed by wetting uh, paper, pieces of tissue to extract that color. If we go to the next slide, 
this is a detail of that sky. And once you really zero in on it, and I would encourage you if you're local and available to come to uh, into it to see the object sort of in person, you can really see how much is actually going on in this space. You can see there are these uh, areas of blue to the left and then sort of some flecks that appear uh, throughout. There's also some sort of orangish, orangish uh, smudging or marks. Um, suggestion perhaps of uh, sky or landscape um, aspects that appear above the buildings. And so we wonder, uh, were those marks uh, there on the paper already? Were they uh, deliberate? Um, either way, they certainly add to the, uh, the feel of that space. And when I was chatting with uh, Kristen Hill at the James Castle House, she was reminding me about uh, James Castle as being a smoker and talking about how she'd seen one piece, for example, where there was even the imprint of his fingers, his uh, tobacco sort of stained fingers on a work of art. And so now when I uh, see these sort of smudges here, I wonder, you know, was that a deliberate choice? Was that something that was happened on the paper. This is a double-sided drawing. Was it something that um, he uh, capitalized so wonderfully on or how, how did all of this uh, come about? So either way, it certainly adds to the effect of this uh, beautiful skyscrape, skyscape. Um, if we move on to the next uh, slide. So I just mentioned that this is a double-sided drawing. So we'll take a peek at what's on the other side of the drawing, which is equally uh, wondrous. Uh, Castle was a prolific creator, he worked daily. He enjoyed showing his art to others. He was known to have organized his work by uh, size to wrap it, bundle it, and then sort of place it in walls, on rafters, and in other sort of uh, protected spaces. And so he also sometimes created displays of his artworks and uh, would even document them. And so uh, that's what we're seeing here uh, on the other side of this image. You can see some of his uh, constructions of figures on the lower left. You can see other drawings. He uh, is known to have displayed favorite drawings in his working spaces. So we have this sort of beautiful uh, glimpse into uh, his world. In the next uh, slide, you can kind of get a taste of some of the other types of works that he created, but here you can also uh, see, for any of you who may not be familiar with uh, works of Castle outside of this landscape, um, here are some other examples of his work that kind of show the uh, types of objects that he was, and subjects that he was interested in. And if we go to the next slide, we can also think about how is it that we, given um, the time and location and um, sort of everything, how is it that we have even come to know the work of James Castle? And so sort of the, the short answer to that would be that Castle's nephew um, attended art school at the Oregon Museum of Art School and um, showed his work to one of his teachers, there was interest, and they organized an exhibition that resulted in the first exhibition of his work in 19, around 1952. Um, his work over the years was shown primarily in um, Idaho and uh, nearby. There were some uh, traveling shows that, that traveled even, I think, to Alaska and uh, Texas as venues. Then um, things went quiet for a while, and what you see here uh, throughout the 1980s. Then in 1997, Intuit has its own history with Castle organizing Silent World, The Art of James Castle. And you can see some installation images from that 1997 exhibition here. And um, also, um, I, I love the image on the lower right because it shows one of the, the bundles. It also shows some of the other materials and helps kind of get a sense of scale for some of this work. Uh, you can see the, um, in the slide on the lower left, these um, 
the cigarette uh, cartons and how he sort of uh, transformed them as well. Um, and now his work is uh, very widely collected and um, you can see it in many major museums and exhibitions. So we can go to the next uh, slide. And um, so I have been thinking a bit about Castle and about uh, place and it's important. And uh, even last night I was sitting looking at an image of Castles and um, listening to a talk on uh, not related to Castle, but on uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And one of the interviewers was uh, for the panel had posed a question, uh, does place still matter in the same way? And they were talking about the importance of solitude for him as a writer. And so I started thinking a bit about the importance of uh, that solitude for Castle, the, way that he had this ability to, in this space that he was allowed to create, and sort of what is it about place that draws us to an artist's work, especially someone like Castle, who um, is so interesting because his works, I see them as being very much about a specific place, but yet they also sort of uh, transcend it. And there's this aspect of memory that comes in uh, as well, and so kind of this unification of memory and place, and um, I think as a viewer, it's interesting to think about uh, that when approaching his work too. But also now, uh, as of 2018, one can literally um, have the experience of going to uh, to a place, to the James Castle House, uh, the now uh, renovated site where Castle lived for, uh, with his family for much of his life. And these are some installation shots of that site, which now um, is hoping to keep Castle's uh, spirit of creativity working on site through artist and residency programs. Uh, you can see the original rafters in the image on the right and on the left. Uh, some of the materials that were uncovered, including this really wonderfully decorated uh, collaged wall that was uncovered. And of course, there were some works that had been uh, discovered uh, there as well. And we'll go to the last sort of concluding uh, slide. And so, in this sort of quick snapshot of Castle and his work, I'm uh, curious as viewers sort of what your response is to the work or how uh, what's kind of going through your mind when you're looking at or how uh, you might think about it. I know we have a few moments left. <laughs> well. I'll dive in and say hello. And, um, or should I raise my hand? Oh, okay. Go ahead, Lisa. Um, thank you, Allison. That was really lovely and, and great to see a whole bunch of you and have uh, moments just to um, gaze at and contemplate on James Castle's work, and this is really lovely. It's I'm proud to be um, a, a friend, a longtime friend of Intuit, and especially for all the people that um, early on uh, in just made sure that Intuit showed James Castle's work early on in the first time in Chicago. Um, I just wanted to um, have a shout out to the James Castle House and um, I, I, I know Rachel Reichert, who's here this evening, and I, I don't know the other staff, but they are doing work at the highest order. And as someone in the House Museum Racket, or formerly in the House Museum Racket at the Roger Brown Study Collection, um, I really, really admire how they're approaching the, um, the preservation and using James Castle's life and work as as the turning point and and the inspiration for everything they're doing so 
Um, thank you, everyone. And I encourage everyone to go to jamescastlehouse.org. And if you go to explore, they have really great videos that you can learn a lot and see a lot. Um, I'll also mention that Rachel Reichert is uh, co um, he co runs something called the Atlanta School in rural Idaho. And you should look that up as well. It's a kind of an interesting um, artist residency um, based around um, appreciation of land and place and um, preservation. Um, I'm sure connected to her um, deep appreciation and her colleagues for the, um, the landscapes of James Castle. Thank you, Lisa. There's an activity in the chat, which I'll uh, share with you, Allison, uh, is uh, there's uh, some comments about the textures of the sky and the subtle shading that you so beautifully uh, drew our eye to, um, especially here with the color that maybe is purposeful smudging or, you know, maybe even thinking about did his hand have that smudge on it and then it transferred to the paper. Uh, so texture is a really big thing. Um, and also, I think you might have said this, but um, did James Castle learn ASL um, in his life? It's my understanding that he did not, that he used a form of uh, family sign, but never uh, formally uh, learned to sign. Another uh, comment that I'm seeing here is about how um, that it seems that James Castle was able to capture wide open space in these drawings. Uh, and have you, when you, as you were looking at these images, did you think about that space that was created on these pieces of paper? I did. I think it's what drew me to this image is because there is just sort of this expanse of ground, this expanse of uh, sky. And I just found that I kept wanting to look at it. I think I see a comment in the, the chat as well from Jonathan. I keep coming to how complete this landscape feels and that he feels immediately in that world. And I, uh, I do, I do, uh, my experience with it is that the landscape, it creates a feel and a mood that is immediate as, as a, for me and my viewing of the work. And so uh, that was one of the reasons I thought it'd be so interesting to look at with others to sort of uh, see if other people had a similar kind of experience with it and to think about uh, looking at something that in some ways is a kind of uh, stark but yet is very expressive and really has so much going on but that one could perhaps with any work especially that's intimate in scale i think they're very easy to just sort of walk by but i think you know sort of bringing these sort of intimate works uh, to to the program is is nice is nice. So now, uh, I think if you when you go to into it, you will be sure not to miss this. <laughs> also, Meg had this comment that you can almost like hear the wind in like this very flat land, uh, and you can really do feel like, for example, when you were talking about the soil and the texture of the paper. You know, it makes me think about maybe erosion as well, right? Like you know, this earth that perhaps is cracked in some way. Yeah. Is there any other comments that we have? You can unmute yourself as well, um, or you can use the chat. Um, we have both features here. Um, I have a question. So he, he never had to work. He was able to, to make his art. He made his art. He did. He uh, helped around the home with certain activities, but most of his time was spent uh, 
he was able to devote much time to creating art. So that's tremendous. That's great. And uh, uh, Lisa, thank you so much for mentioning uh, the James Castle House. Uh, and I would also add as a second great online resource, the James Castle uh, archive and collection, both of those since I'm not sure everyone is traveling the, the same way that uh, we used to be before. So um, if you're wanting to have a, some quick and easy access to additional information, both of those sites have some great resources and also many more examples of Castle's images. I'll also just to follow up on the, the last comment, um, I am so astounded over and over when considering James Castle's work because I don't really know of another artist who did nothing for their entire life, you know, past childhood, whenever he started, um, but make art. And that's just like completely extraordinary. And he did it so with such intention, intensity of focus and confidence and everything. And I always um, like to share books. And so I would imagine these books would be in Intuit's library, the Robert A. Roth Study Center, but um, Lynn Cook's um, collective um, book writings called Show and Store is, I think, one of the really, really fine fine pieces. And hold on, I'm gonna get one more book. Uh -oh. Oh, while well, Lisa comes back, or Lisa, are you back? Castle uh, Primer is a really, really great book. Maybe Rachel could put in the chat if and how you can acquire this great little book. So, uh, so one last question by Phyllis. How durable is soot as a drying material? Which is a really uh, important question. Yeah, uh, that's a great question, uh, Phyllis. Um, <laughs> I suppose I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, the works that I've seen tend to be in pretty good condition. I know some of his works have undergone conservation. Um, I don't know. Well, thank you all so much for being here today. Um, this last slide is about our sponsors who have helped us um, make sure that the time of our teaching artists and our guest speakers um, was uh, compensated. And of course, um, our new uh, interpretation and the work that we do post um, our programming. I also want to invite you to uh, into its visionary ball, which will happen tomorrow at 7 p.m. You still have time to register. It is free. You don't have to uh, pay to uh, join us at a visionary ball where um, the artist Lonnie Holly will be honored. And there's an online virtual program accompanying that. Um, other than that, uh, please just stay in touch with Intuit. Uh, thank you from wherever you are visiting us from virtually. Um, I saw some chat of Minnesota <laughs> in, in the room, um, but thank you so much for your continued support of uh, our museum and have a really great night.